In our previous video, we went over the idealist view of perception. In this video, we'll be going over the idealist view of the relationship between the mind and the brain. Let's begin. In order to understand the mind and the brain, we must first understand the basic ontology of idealism. As we discussed in the previous video, all that exists is mental processes within universal consciousness, which means that matter is the image of mental processes. Matter is not mindless, like in physicalism and dualism, and so there cannot be any ontological distinction between a mind and the brain. The brain, on idealism, is the image of a person's mental life. It is also important to understand what the function of the brain is. The first thing to notice is that the brain is a metacognitive machine. The brain has many functions, but the two important ones for metacognition involve the default mode network and the dorsal attention network. The default mode network is responsible for introspection as well as being aware of our own inner experiences. The dorsal attention network is responsible for us being aware of our external environments. What it explains is our knowledge of consciousness, or what is termed self-reflexive consciousness. We are able to gain the knowledge of our experiences through the brain's metacognitive system. So, on idealism, the mind is a self-aware experiencer. A mind has a first-person perspective, which is experience, and that this experience could know about itself. We know about our own experiences through our brain's metacognitive system. We are able to build a sense of identity, or what is termed our ego or individuality. When we die, of course, we will lose the sense of ego, but not the raw experience itself. Now, with the mind and its relationship to the brain, there are both the intrinsic and extrinsic aspects of the mind. The intrinsic aspect of our mind includes our thoughts and feelings. The extrinsic aspect of our mind, however, would be the brain. What the brain looks like is the extrinsic appearance of our inner mental lives. But the brain is made of matter, of course. And, on idealism, if the brain is made of the same kind of stuff as the rest of the universe, then on idealism, all matter would be the extrinsic appearance of mind. Now, there can be different interpretations of this. As we went over in a previous video, there are different variations of idealism one can hold to, and each one will have something different to say as it relates to the mind and the brain. But regardless, on idealism, matter is itself just mental activity. It's what mental activity looks like from a third-person perspective. A certain neuron, or a collection of neurons, may be the appearance of our memories or feelings seen from a third-person perspective. But, this is the extrinsic aspect, and the intrinsic aspect can only be known by the subject. So this would be the idealist view of the relationship between the mind and the brain. There re isn't really any ontological distinction between the two. If all is fundamentally mental, then even the brain itself would be the appearance of mental processes. And so, that is the relationship between mind and brain. In our next video, we will be summarizing everything that we have gone over in this series so that we can have a proper understanding of the idealist metaphysics.